Hey, Pretty Gang, it is Junior Exclusive, start a business coach, and I am here to talk to my braiders. This video in particular is brought to you by the Braid Hair for Cash course, so please check it out in the description below, or you can just go to braidhairforcash.com and you can go ahead and check it out. So, this actually came by request in my last a live stream that I did one of the ladies who are, is a part of the Burder Gang Pretty Money Gang hashtag Pretty Gang in the comments stop playing get this money okay but uh one of our Burder Gang one of our Pretty Gangs asked you know how can do I do bookkeeping for my braiding business so I'm gonna go ahead and give you some quick examples and let's just jump right into it okay so the first thing that you're gonna need to know is that you need to get some type of account now the account will depend on whether or not you are side hustling this is an actual business or if this is um. So proprietor, sole pri, proprietorship, okay? If this is sole proprietorship, then you're gonna have to go ahead and um, create an account and just have your business transactions going through there. I suggest to not mix your business transactions. You definitely wanna keep all your transactions that have to do with your braiding just for braiding. So um, something I like that they have at uh, a credit union, I have a credit union, and um, they allow you to have a savings account and they allow you to split shares up inside of your savings accounts. So that can be something that you can do. You can have a savings account, but you can ask for a share and then that share is gonna be only where your braiding money goes. So that's something that you can do. Also, I see some people keep some of their money or all of their, their braiding money in uh, accounts such as PayPal, uh, Stripe, or Venmo. For me personally, I wouldn't just leave my money there. It's okay to make the transactions that way if that's what you choose to do. However, that wouldn't be me. I would prefer a checking or a business account, but that's just me. So that's something you want to think about. The second thing, even though this is a side hustle or this may be something you do part-time or something on the side, you definitely want to make sure that you're documenting everything that you do. So you can use paper sheet, which is what I'm going to show you. Um, and well, paper sheet, if you want to print it out, or you can um, do it online, you can use Excel sheet, or for those of us who are a little bit more advanced, you might want to um, invest in a monthly fee for QuickBooks. So let's jump right over to a Google Docs document that I actually have, and um, I'm going to show you, and in the description below, I'm going to leave this Google Docs, so if that's something that you want to use, definitely use it, but make sure that you are always talking to your CPA, always talking to um, the person who does your taxes or your accounting. Um, my bookkeeping sheet is just for tracking something. For an example, it's for personal use. It's something you would have to use on your own. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So say, for example, on the screen we have, you just braided someone's hair on the 5th of December and they they zelled you with that uh, $100. Then you braided on the 6th and then somebody uh, gave you cash for freedom braids of $75. You have an automatic payment coming out on the 1st of every month for your email. And then you also just purchased some hair and some gel. And you also purchased a $10 class. Uh, for those of you guys who do not know, I have a how I started my hair braiding business with $10 for $10, but let's just say, for example, you purchase some class somewhere um, and it's useful to your business and it's considered a training. Uh, so it's for it was $10. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to our bookkeeping sheet, right? And say, for example, our starting balance is $282, $282 right? So what do we say? So you got a Zelle deposit of $100, right? So you're gonna put in $100. And on the the slash is going to be the type of money. So how did you get this money? It was through Zelle. That is uh, technically, a, well, that's going to be online. So there's only two types for deposits. It's either going to be online, it's going to be cash in your hand, right? Um, then you got the second deposit, which was the second deposit, which was the $75 that was in your hand, um, right? So 75 and then you're going to put cash. And the reason why you want to keep um, tracking like this is because it makes it very easy for you and the person who's going to be doing your taxes so that you can go ahead and get all of those awesome deductions that you hear a lot of people talk about, right? Um, and so those were the two things you've done so far. So your total at this point, you have $282 was um, where you started with, right? $282 plus the $100 plus the $75. So you have approximately, you have $400. And fifty-seven dollars. Okay, that's with your balance that you already had, um, the fact that you got a hundred dollars, and the fact that you got the seventy-five dollars. Now we're going to talk about the expenses. So remember the example. I'm going off the example we have here. So you got that automatic. Um, you did the automatic charge for the email. 
So the expenses for your email, right? And what category does this fall under? Um, I actually suggest three types of categories, tools and products, um, educations and trainings, or business or technology for your business. So this would actually follow under fall under biz tech as your category. And how much was this? Is six dollars? Um, like if you use Google, Google charges you six dollars a month to have an, your own personalized email. So what date did you? What day did did we talk? To, did we say that this was on? So this was on December the first, um, twenty twenty. And then you're gonna want to put. Do you have a receipt? You can say yes or no. Yes, you have the receipt because when you, if you were to do it through Google, they they send you an email once a month. They send you a, they send you a receipt once a month. Um, then what was the next expense that we said we had? We purchased hair and gel, so that was um, so we could put hair, gel. And what category does this fall under? This falls under your tools and products. So you're gonna put tools, products. And how much did you spend? You spent forty dollars. Okay, so that's forty dollars. And what day was that one again? And again, you want to keep your days and your amounts and all of this tracked because, like I said, this is going to be very helpful for um, your tax person or your CPA or even for yourself if you're going to be um, asking for home-based business deductions or for if you have an LLC. Um, you can ask for those deductions. So that was 12, 12, 5, 20. And then the question for this is, do you have a receipt? You might say no. Okay. Um, so that's going to be something that you want to definitely, uh, you might not have the physical receipt, but say, for example, if you made this purchase on your debit card, you might can retrieve it that way, but it's in your best interest as a braider who's doing maybe, um, side hustle work or, you know, gig work. To definitely keep all the receipts that are pertaining to your business, um, because see, these are the type of things that um, you know. Of course, it's forty dollars, so you're not gonna get questioned if it came to like taxes or whatever. But say if this was for a thousand dollars, you didn't have a receipt, that would be questionable to your for your CPA and for the IRS. Like, how are we giving you a tax deduction on four four thousand dollars when you don't have no receipt? Okay, so you just want to make sure you always have receipts. Then the next one, okay, the ten dollar class. And so let's say you uh, you did a, a my, you did my course the um, the replay uh, for brain hair for cash. So braid class, right? Then what would this fall under? This would fall under education and training, okay? And how much was that? That was ten bucks. Um, and then what day was that? Twelve eight. You know, 12, 8, 20, 2020, and then do you have the receipt? Yes, um, because again, it's an online thing. That's something you can have a, a receipt for. So, okay, so at this point, you have the $6 plus the $40 plus the $10, okay? So then you'll come down here, and as of right now, your total income is here, right? The 400, and um, that would be the 400 and $57, so you come here with the total income, 457. And then um, here we have what? $56 is the your total expenses, right? So then you'll come here and it's gonna say, okay, what's your new balance for when you start maybe your next sheet? So that's actually gonna be um, $401. And you might put some notes here if you want to. You might want to put a note here, for example, um, with the hair and gel. Like I said, if you didn't have the physical receipt, but you know you like did it on your debit card, you might put something here like, um, like hair purchase. You might put hair purchase, um, twelve five. You might say um, get or print, purchase, yeah, you could put print from debit as receipt, right? So you might put something like that, just as for your own person, just for your own personal notes, you guys. But I just kind of want to show you guys kind of like 
okay, this is, could be your start balance, this could be your deposits, whether it's online or cash, how you total it out, you know, how you kind of categorize some of the things that we as spreaders might use, your biz tech, um, your tools and products, your educations and trainings, and definitely want to get your totals here. You definitely want to make sure you, you're, you're documenting your expenses and having your next balance just so if you were to use the sheet again or you were to print it, you would know where to start from, where you started from, and where you are now so that you can start on your next sheet. Um, also, of course, on here, you with the star balance, I should have said that in the beginning, but you're going to definitely want to document, like, what day are we talking about? When, when is this start balance sheet for? Um, you might put the, today's date or something I would probably do is I'd put month. And then I would put whatever the month is, right? So for us, right now, we're talking about December of 2020, right? So something like that. So you guys, I just want to come in and show you guys just a, a quick way how to go ahead and document. Um, if you were just trying to document it on your own, but keep on your own, um, it is in your best interest as a braider to make sure that you are staying neat and clean when it comes to your bookkeeping because um, when it's time to present this to your tax person, your CPA. You want to make sure that everything that you need is there and there'll be no questions asked. So again, make sure you're checking out my course in the description below, the Braid Hair for Cash course. Check it out and I'll be talking to you guys later. Bye, you guys.